Good day. My name is Joe DeChristopher. I'm a senior at Florida Gulf Coast University, and today I'm going to talk to you about artificial ground freezing. For many years, construction projects involved with tunneling and mining operations were limited due to soil stability. When you had too soft of a soil, you couldn't tunnel it, otherwise it would collapse on top of you. But today, with artificial ground freezing, otherwise known as AGF, these projects can be completed with success. Projects like the undercrossing of Lamont River in Zurich, Boston's Big Dig, and Toledo Station, Naples, Italy, have been possible due to artificial ground freezing. And recently, contaminant control has been another feature that can be used for artificial ground freezing, like the Fukushima disaster in 2011. A little history, a German scientist, F.H. Posh, in 1863 developed the procedure. He froze a 107-foot layer of quicksand in 33 days. This was for a mining operation. Later on in the United States, this technology was received there, and in 1888, a depth of 100 feet was reached by the Chaplin Mining Corporation. Until the 1980s, a graduate student by the name of Joseph Spoko developed the three-dimensional software that allowed computer modeling to make artificial ground freezing more efficient and more effective. And in 1990, the Environmental Protection Agency listed AGF in its handbook on in-situ treatment of hazardous wave contaminated soils. A little basic implementation. It's pretty simple. Rods are ejected into the soil concern, and they are pumped with either calcium chloride or liquid nitrogen. Calcium chloride is the cheaper of the methods and is typically used. The temperature ranges from negative 25 to negative 35 degrees Celsius, and the soil will usually freeze in typically four to six weeks. Average cost is between 15 to 25 dollars per square foot. Liquid nitrogen, however, is much faster. It's temperatures of negative 50 to negative 60 degrees Celsius. It can freeze the soil within six to eight days. This process is very expensive, but sometimes isn't used when necessary. There are several problems associated with artificial ground freezing. First one is heaving. When water freezes, it can expand up to 9%. This can cause pressure and endanger surrounding buildings and utilities. To solve this problem, engineers have usually installed heat pipes to control the freeze area and reduce the overall pressure on these structures. The most common problem, though, is settlement. When the, when the ice unfreezes, it reduces in size. And in certain materials like clay that have low conductivity, the water can't travel fa in back fast enough, so this leaves a void space into the material and will induce increased settlement. It also can cause changes in the soil properties like cohesion. Seepage flow is another problem with AGF. When you have flows that are over 6.5 feet per day, the calcium chloride brine solution can't lower the energy in the system enough to freeze it in time. So that's when liquid nitrogen is required. Projects. I'm going to give you some examples of real live ones, the ones I mentioned earlier. The Under Crossing on Light River in Zurich, 1986. This is one of the earlier projects that was performed, and there were some problems with it. Like I said, the freeze modeling software here that was utilized was one of the earlier programs. And it actually was, it was deemed pretty accurate in the end. The problem with this project, though, at the time, horizontal drilling methods weren't, didn't allow for the accurate placement of the freeze pipes. You can see in the diagram to your right, section B looks fairly consistent as far as the shape of the tunnel, where section A, it's pretty inaccurate. This caused a lot of problems in the timing of the operation. Originally, it was planned that 60 hours would occur for freezing to take place. In actuality, it took over 100 hours to freeze the soil to allow construction workers to proceed with the project. Boston's Big Dig was a big controversial project. It had many faults, but one of its shining moments was artificial ground freezing. Three tunnels, 350 feet long, were placed underneath the 6.5 feet of an operating railroad. The tunnels were preformed and jacked into the frozen ground. The recorded settlement was 15.7 inches after the project was completed, which was very consistent with computer models. It was actually less. So, artificial ground freezing, you can see as time advanced, has proceeded better. A more recent project in Naples, Italy in 2012 was the Toledo Station. 
a service tunnel 13 meters wide, 17 meters high, and 40 meters long was added to the existing station. Here, liquid nitrogen and calcium chloride brine were used in the project. The reason for this was because the tunnel was located below the groundwater table and the seepage flow was more than 6.5 feet thick. Initially, liquid nitrogen was used, but to make it more economical, it was switched to calcium chloride once the ground was frozen. Another new thing that was presented here was a special triaxial cell test, which showed a cohesion reduction in the yellow tuff that was present on the site. It was reduced from 850 kilopascals to 250 kilopascals. This information allowed the computer modeling from the DFM software package known as Flock 3D to analyze and predict the settlement that occurred on the site. A combination of a chemical and cement grouting with AGF were used to necessary and complete the project successfully. From the Flock 3D software, you can see these are the results from the site. Here, the benchmark 146 represents the actual settlement, and compared to the calculation from the Flock 3D, is pretty consistent. Also, if you notice in the thawing portion, the different values of cohesion were entered into the system, and you can see that the 200 kilopascals was very accurately aligned with the actual settlement results. Every year, AGF becomes more and more sophisticated. And this project really represents a true success of its operations. In 2011, Japan was hit by a major earthquake. A nuclear power plant in Fukushima contaminated groundwaters with radiation. Here, AGF was utilized to control that flow of water. Modeling predicted that the reduction in flow would be from 550 cubic yards per day down to 4 cubic yards per day. Although the large energy costs from 2 to $3 billion per year was excessive, it was necessary to control this flow of water and prevent risk to the surrounding population. Artificial ground freezing has advanced in many ways since its initial conception in 1863. With the advances in geotechnical engineering's understanding of how soils behave and computer modeling, AGF is a viable option compared to conventional methods like sheet piles and slurry walls. It has proven itself worthy in the fast contamination coal projects like Fukushima. AGF is now being widely used in many construction and remediation products around the globe. This will conclude my presentation. I hope you found it informative. Have a wonderful day.